This is Scott the Fix-It Guy. Our goal with our videos is to empower you to be able to do the repairs on your own and save a whole lot of money and also get that great feeling of having fixed it by yourself. Today we have an easy one. This is a Whirlpool electric dryer that won't heat up and we're going to be testing it and replacing the heating element. So when you test it, you know that it spins, but it's not heating. So the next thing to try is the breaker box. Go to the dryer breaker and turn it all the way off and then all the way back on and then try it again. If you still don't have any heat, you need to remove this lower panel after unplugging the dryer by prying this little tab down with a screwdriver on the right and left hand side and then pulling this panel towards you. And then once you pull it towards you, you can lift it up. It'll come right off of the little uh, forks underneath it. And that's going to give you good access to all the parts that you need to check. So you can just pull it right up. Here's a picture of the heating assembly. And the part here where it says heating element connector is where power comes in. And the thermal cutoff we see circled in yellow often is a defective part that needs to be replaced. And sometimes the high limit thermostat would need to be replaced too. But today we're going to be concentrating on the element. Sometimes these dryer heating elements will get a crack, just being heated and cooled many times. Eventually the metal breaks and then the power can't flow through it. So ordered a kit online. We got it in the mail and it's a really good one. It comes with the new heating element, but also it comes with a couple other parts that are important. So here is the frame of the heating element. This thing actually just slides right into the housing. You have to take out one little screw and you can slide out the old one and slide in the new one. So it'll only take you a couple minutes. This is where the power comes in. It's 220 volts to heat it up. It also comes with this little part, which is a thermal cutoff. If, um, the dryer gets too hot, it'll blow this fuse and then no power will go into your heating element. So this company is really cool. They give you the element and they give you this thermal cutoff. Here's the company and their website where you can order one. I'll put a um, link in the description below also. And for this company, if you uh, do the repair and you videotape it, you can send it to them and or post it to Amazon and they'll give you a full refund for your purchase so that's pretty cool they believe in their product so over here we have another part that comes with it and it's the cycling um, I'm sorry this is the thermal cutoff which is like a fuse and the other one's a cycling thermostat and it will turn on and off as the dryer is heating so it's nice if you can to replace all three of these but oftentimes the element is the part that needs to be corrected. So we're going to go over how to do that. It's pretty easy. So this box is symbolic of the casing that the element comes out of. It really just slides in and slides out. And it, again, it's only being held in by one quarter inch screw. So it's kind of a tight fit though, just like in the box. It goes right in <clears throat> and comes right out. We're going to show you um, how to do it on most of the Kenmore and Whirlpool models, pretty easy. This is how the electrons flow through the coil, and then they come around, they go down to the bottom side of the coil, so it's getting a lot of heat, and then it flows out. But if there's a break in that spring, the electrons can't flow and it won't heat. If you have a multi-tester like this, it can help you to determine which one of the three components may be having trouble, but since the kit comes with all three, it might be a good idea just to switch them all out. So once you have that panel off and you have it unplugged, you can just take this piece right here, this heat deflector, and just bend it down towards you to basically 90 degrees, kind of like how an oven door would open. It's not very hard to bend. So you get that down, and then it just shows you the arrow of where that thing is. Just pull it down to create a nice opening in the heater housing, and then we need to just take out one quarter inch screw it's kind of a tight fit, so if you have a ratchet like we see in the picture here, that makes it a lot easier. You're just going to go lefty-loosey. Basically, you're pushing up, and it'll spin that screw out. And once the screw's out, you can grab the old element, and you can pull it towards you. I find that you have to pull 
and wiggle at the same time because it is kind of a tight squeeze. So you just pull that towards you and when you get it out you'll probably notice that part of that spring has a break in it. So just pull and wiggle, it'll come loose. And it comes right out of that opening that we created by taking off that front panel. I'll pull it all the way out. And you can grab your brand new element. And all you gotta do is basically the opposite. You just start sliding it in, which is really easy. You gotta make sure that when you slide it in, the little uh, prongs where the power comes in are to your left. That's important. So we're gonna slide that in. And kind of the same concept as you slide it in. You push in, wiggle. If it feels like it's jammed, just wiggle around a little bit more. Keep pushing, it'll feed all the way in. This new one looks great, nice and shiny. And these last a long time. Once, once you replace them, get a lot of life out of it. And then you want to put that screw back in, that quarter inch screw, that just holds it all in. And after you do that, you can bend that heat deflector back up. If you like to, you can also just remove one little screw underneath the heat deflector and take it off. But uh, it doesn't hurt it to bend it. So bend that back up or put the screw back in. And you're almost done. Next thing you could do is plug it in and turn it on and just make sure that it's going to glow and that that has solved the problem. So we plug it back into the 220. We know the breakers, both breakers are on for the dryer. We got a nice bright glow and we know that's working. That's, that's exactly what the healthy element should look like. So this will be really easy. Probably take you 20 to 30 minutes and you'll be done and your dryer will be back to normal. So thanks so much for watching. Thanks so much for watching our video. We really appreciate your support. And when you get a chance, please press the subscribe button below so you can be subscribed and also the notification bell so we can send you more videos about appliance repair. Please also give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. If you really liked the video and it really helped you, please press this new applaud button and you can show your support and also get a nice clapping hands for your video. Thanks again.